Hello, and welcome to Federal Flash. I'm Monica Allman, and I'm joined by Nikki McKinney. The Senate Education Committee held a hearing on ways in which states have leveraged the flexibility in the Every Student Succeeds Act, or ESSA, to design innovative accountability systems. John Klein, former chair of the House Education Committee, sent a letter to Education Secretary DeVos regarding the implementation of ESSA. And the Department of Education announced the Striving Readers Literacy Grants. For more on the hearing, let's turn to Nikki. Thanks, Monica. State education officials from Louisiana, New Mexico, Tennessee, and a former commissioner from New York testified before the Senate Education Committee on state efforts to implement ESSA. During the hearing, members asked about various aspects of ESSA accountability plans, in particular those aimed at ensuring students graduate college and career ready. Democrats urged the department to enforce the important guardrails within the law that are designed to ensure that every student has equal access to a high quality education. Here's the response one of the witnesses, Dr. David Steiner, gave to a question regarding the key equity provisions that the department must ensure states comply with. Most importantly, first, there has to be a clear definition of consistently underperforming, otherwise we won't reach those students. Secondly, we have to be very, very clear about what constitutes the identification of intervention, right? not to make it opaque by excluding subgroups from your accountability system. To view the hearing in its entirety and to access witness testimony, visit the link below. After the hearing, the Alliance sat down with two witnesses to discuss key issues that weren't addressed. You can watch that video at the link below. Thanks, Nikki. Recently, former House Education Committee Chairman John Klein sent a letter to Secretary DeVos requesting a meeting to discuss the department's oversight of state implementation of ESSA's testing requirements. Klein, a key negotiator of the law, had concerns that testing laws in at least two states, Arizona and New Hampshire, do not comply with the statute. ESSA requires that states administer annual, statewide tests for students in grades three through eight and once in high school. New Hampshire's testing law requires a statewide assessment only once in elementary school, once in middle school, and once in high school, and would allow districts to develop their own tests for students in grades three through eight during the years in between. Arizona's law would allow school districts to choose from a menu of assessments determined by the State Board of Education starting in the 2019-2020 school year. New Hampshire reportedly plans to request a waiver from the testing requirement, while Arizona's plan has already been approved. Last week, the department announced that more than $141 million was awarded to 11 states through the Striving Readers Comprehensive Literacy Program to improve literacy in schools, including pre-literacy, reading, and writing for children from birth through grade 12. And in case you missed it, the Internal Revenue Service issued a press release reminding educators of work-related tax benefits for which they may qualify. To access that release, visit the link below. Finally, there are some updates in senior staffing at the department. President Trump appointed Tim Kelly, a state representative from Michigan, to serve as the Assistant Secretary of the Office of Career and Technical and Adult Education. In that role, Kelly would oversee the One Billion Perkins Career and Technical Education Program. And the president announced his intent also to nominate James Blue to serve as Assistant Secretary for Planning, Evaluation, and Policy Development. Mr. Blue has worked with Secretary DeVos in the past, championing efforts to expand school choice. The president also announced his intent to nominate Mitchell Zace to serve as Deputy Secretary of Education, the number two spot at the department. Mr. Zace previously served as the State Superintendent of Education for South Carolina. He is most known for his opposition to the Common Core State Standards. That's all for now. For an email alert when the next episode of Federal Flash is available, email us at alliance at allfored.org. Thanks for watching. Federal Flash is the Alliance for Excellent Education's video series on important developments in education policy in Washington, D.C. in five minutes or less.